All right, Shalom. I want to begin the lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Kodash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much do honors and respect to the sense of brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, want to say shalom to the believers, which will be you brothers, as well as you sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson, which in this sitting right here, I wanted to briefly speak to the destruction which has been laid up and prepared for this place, America, Babylon the Great, which is a concept that has been resisted and overall dismissed when presented to the masses of you people out there. Well, we understand that not only is America's destruction inevitable, but pretty much it's the only thing that makes sense. Understanding the true nature of the Heavenly Father and the fact that He is a power that executes justice and judgment in the planet Earth. And in no wise would the wicked be acquitted. Case in point, when you consider the visitation of the old world in the form of the flood or the takedown of the city of Nineveh, not to mention the violent overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the five neighboring cities, just to name a few. Well, why not America? Would not the Heavenly Father visit Esau, the so-called white man, for his trespasses? Let's begin right here. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, the 16th chapter, and the 11th verse, and it reads, And if there be one stiff neck among the people, it is a marvel if he escape unpunished. It is a marvel if he escape unpunished. For mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, and if there be one stiff neck among the people, and this pretty much ranges from something as subtle as the coming and going of men in relation to individuals to the extreme of entire nations, which in this case would apply to the so-called white man, whose ways are contrary to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Case in point, when you consider the dietary laws, there are certain foods that's considered off limits in the sight of the Heavenly Father. Now, do the so-called white man honor and reverence that commandment? No, he turns right around and make the very food that the Heavenly Father considered unlawful a delicacy, such as pork, shrimp, lobster, or in the case of the law recorded in the book of Leviticus, the 20th chapter and the 13th verse, as touching a man lying with mankind as he would with a woman, and the fact that that would be considered an offense, an abomination, and they shall surely be put to death, where the so-called white man turns right around and celebrates homosexuality and will go as far as condemning you for coming up against his agenda, where those will be a few of the many offenses that contribute to the so-called white man being stiff neck Again, it reads, and if there be one stiff neck among the people, it is a marvel if he escape unpunished. It is a marvel if he escape unpunished. So if this place is not visited by the Heavenly Father and ultimately destroyed, then you should marvel. You should be surprised. Why? Well, for one, it will make the word of the Heavenly Father invalid, which that's not the case. But ultimately, it will prove that the Heavenly Father is not a power of justice and judgment, in which Esau's visitation will be just that, an act of justice. Matter of fact, This is the book of Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, and the first verse, and it reads, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled. 
woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. And this is obviously concerning Esau, the so-called white man, which this man plundering and spoiling the nations is well documented. And most notable, his treacherous dealings towards the indigenous people of Northern, Central, and South America, who would be of the tribes of the nation of Israel. Well, this man in his mischief would draw up contracts. He would enter into certain covenants only to break them in effort to spoil the natives for their resources. Which that campaign was forged through his blessing, the sword, in the form of his military. Well, he's going to be recompensed for that act. Matter of fact, let me grab some real quick and we're going to go back. This is the book of Job, the 29th chapter and the 17th verse. And it reads, and I break the jaws of the wicked and I break the jaws of the wicked in which this word wicked is synonymous with Esau, the so-called white man. And you can read about that in the book of Malachi, the first chapter in the fourth verse. Again, it says, and I break the jaws of the wicked and plucked the spoil out of his teeth. So in an act of justice, the heavenly father will recompense this man for spoiling the nations. And again, that act was forged through his blessing, the sword, which in this case, the scriptures refer to as his teeth, which is manifest through his military. And even to this very day, when you consider this man sees and control of the resources of the planet Earth, well, it was through his teeth, his blessing, the sword. See? So when you go back here again, to the book of Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, and again, the first verse, it reads, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. So there's going to be a time where the so-called white man will no longer have the mastery over the nations. Pretty much the Heavenly Father has now begun to create a level playing field. And what would be the great equalizer? The missiles. Which brings me right here to the book of Jeremiah, the 51st chapter. And beginning at the 47th verse, and it reads, Therefore, behold, the days come. Therefore, behold, the days come, which this is concerning prophecy. Everything is a build up to this moment. See? Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, which for those of us in the know, we understand that Babylon translates to America. See? It says, and her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon. And this pretty much complements the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter, around the name verse, where the kings of the earth shall weep and lament for Babylon. Again, it says, Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoilers shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord, in which the spoilers represents the missiles. They will serve as an act of justice. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's click on these word spoilers. Yeah, in the Hebrew word, it would be shadad, shadad, and it reads to deal violently with, <laughs> to deal violently with. So the missiles will be shot and sent forth in effort to deal violently with who? 
he saw the so-called white man. And remember, we read in the book of Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, when thou cease to deal treacherously, then they shall deal treacherously with thee, in which that act will be forged through World War Three. So if this place is not visited by the Heavenly Father and ultimately destroyed, then you should marvel. You should be surprised. Why? Well, for one, it will make the word of the Heavenly Father invalid, but ultimately it will prove that the Heavenly Father is not a power of justice and judgment. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.